Yeah, so now that we, uh, I've started to move tasks around on the task board, we have the burn down chart and that is a very important tool for us if we want to try to explain to our product owner or, um, or the team in general, are we on track? Are we going to make the sprint? Are we going to make the deadline for the sprint and deliver the features that we expect to be done with this sprint? Are we ahead? Are we behind? How is the progress? Is it good? Is it bad? So that's the goal of the burn down chart. And the burn down chart here will start at the points that we set inside the sprint. So in our case, we set the sprint uh, man hours to 25. We said we had 25 hours available in all. So that's why it's saying 25 up here. And should this be a perfect flow, then after the first day, we would be here at 20.25 hours left. 20.75 hours left. That would be perfect. And the next day we would be down here somewhere. It would be 16 hours left. And the next day, so we have to, the burn down chart will follow this line hopefully. And if that's the case, it might go up and down like this. If it gets that uh, flow, then in the end we'll end at zero hours on Friday the 22nd, where we can then go and make a very cool demo to our customers showing the actual features that we wanted to complete. In my case, I'm ahead. I already kind of did more than expected and I only have 13 hours left. Now that might not be wrong because today I had extra time but I'm gone for the rest of the week. That might make sense. So maybe tomorrow the line will do this all the way over here and then it'll go down again and as long as it stays at least near this line, everything is fine. But as soon as I, as a product owner, might see a line going like this, uh, flatlining all the way here maybe, and then have a small drop and then keep flatlining here, I will panic because I will not make the deadline. I will not make the goal of getting everything done for the final day. So it's important that again, you update your tasks, you update your task board every day to see this guy following the right curve down here to get to the end. And in the day where you guys will present this to us, the owner, uh, sorry, the customer or the product owner, we'll be able to see right away if you guys use Scrum or if you didn't use Scrum the way it should because if the line do not follow this guy, something is horribly wrong. Some of you, I've even seen where the, where the line actually starts growing because you're adding extra tasks. Don't do that. In Scrum we say, in a sprint, you should not add or remove stories. Instead, if something crucial came up, something that you need to handle for any reason, you should just terminate the sprint. And that'll be up to the product owner. If something is so crucial that it cannot wait for the next sprint, you should terminate, end the sprint, and say, we'll just start building a new sprint from today because we don't want to change the current sprint because that will just make it impossible for us to manage the sprint flow. So remember, if you need to add a lot of extra stuff to a sprint, maybe just terminate the sprint, start a new sprint, and there go back to your planning setup. And uh, that's a better way to do it than start adding stories to a running sprint. That's all for this lesson. Next lesson, let's have a look at how we would conduct a sprint review.